Good day and a very warm welcome on behalf of NTI Audio. Today we will talk about the procedure how to set up a loudspeaker test with the FX100. You see already here on this picture a typical setup uh, by that is used that is based on the FX100 system with the SIP module which has a built-in amplifier. You see the simplicity of this setup and we will talk more about these basic procedure to get there. My name is Markus Becker and I'm assisted today by Greg Schmiedle, the product manager of the Flexus line. The topics that we have prepared for you start with a scope and overview, followed by an introduction to the hardware and wiring setup and the test signal definitions. We will talk about the measurements and especially about the definition of past fade limits. Then we have a practical presentation for you. We will summarize what we have shown to you and then also provide some application hints and tips before we end the session with the Q&As. When we talk about loudspeaker testing, ranging from small transducers for mobile phones up to big woofers, you may imagine that this is a very wide field with a lot of special requirements, special applications, specific environments and so on. Now we had to focus ourselves in this presentation on a basic, a kind of a standard setup procedure and that is why we decided to focus here on this SIP module that is plugged into the FX100 and that provides a power amplifier up to 30 watt for direct connection to the device under test. Talking about the software, we refer mainly to the RT speaker software, which is a very comprehensive, very straightforward software that guides you through this setup procedure, but still offers a lot of opportunities, a lot of options to tweak and to customize, customize the system according to your demands. Keep in mind that there exists also the FX control software that comes along with every FX100 instrument. By the way, this software is a little bit more flexible. It offers more possibilities, but on the other side, it is a little bit less well suited for production testing, for instance. And when we talk about the setup procedure, we talk about the test signal selection or definition. We talk about the measurement functions that need to be selected and the definition of the past fade limits. This is what we are going to show you today in this presentation. Let us start with the hardware. You see here a schematic sketch of a typical hardware by using the SIP module in the FX100 and you see at first sight the beauty of the setup because it's a very simple one. We have just one cable from the output of the SIP module that leads to our transducer and we have a second cable from the microphone going back to the analyzer input. Currently there is to our knowledge no other system that has this simplicity, this robustness, this beauty available on the market. The transducer is typically enclosed in a test jig. I have all, only a, a schematic view here because there are so many different solutions depending on the size of the speaker and the requirements of the test. Alternatively, you can also use the Speakon output of the FX SIP module. And here again, just with one cable, you connect your high-end driver to the device and this Speakon offers a four-wire setup. Four-wire setup has the big advantage that it offers a higher measurement accuracy versus the two-wire setup, especially for impedance measurements. And four-wire means that we have two wires for the current that is flowing through the driver to the loudspeaker and we have two other wires that are used to measure the voltage at the pins of the, volta of, of the loudspeaker. And for that reason, the voltage drop across these current leading wires will not go into the voltage measurement of uh, our four-wire setup. That is the big advantage. Now let's spend some words about the test signal. 
nowadays the de facto standard in test signals for loudspeakers is the glide sweep and that is for different reasons first of all uh, how is it built it is created by uh, a sine wave that changes continuously its frequency from low to high the advantage here is that you cover all the frequencies in this range you're not missing any frequency as for instance it would happen with a step sweep the resolution of the measurements is adjustable so the number of measurement points that you want to measure you can select yourself same as the duration and that is a huge advantage when you can predict when you can adjust the duration of such as glide sweep and by that of the whole test you can easily integrate that into an automated environment that has a typical predefined cycle time this is a huge advantage of the glide sweep test signal and it supports all relevant measurement functions for loudspeaker quality control including and that is another big advantage a reliable rub and bus detection rub and bus the generation of audible effects of irritating noise in a defective loudspeaker may happen for instance at very specific narrowband frequencies and by using a glide sweep you are always on the safe side that all of these typical or possible errors will be detected by your rub and bus measurement method now let's take a brief look at the typical measurements we have what we call the conventional measurements frequency response sound level as the user defined frequency polarity the typical impedance measurements uh, DC or AC resonance frequency TLS small parameters or distortion that is what we call conventional measurements you will find these data typically on the data sheet on the specifications of a loudspeaker however from the view of your customer they are mostly interested in having a speaker that does not create any annoying sound that is working absolutely perfectly and here you need to enter this status you need a powerful rub and bus analysis now let me dig a little bit deeper into this rub and bus analysis in the past um, the approach was to detect rub and bus by harmonic distortion analysis and that means harmonic distortion is always a frequency domain analysis so you take a look at the spectrum of the incoming signal so here you have the signal that is picked up by the microphone you sample this signal and then you transfer it into a spectrum by means of fast Fourier transformation or FFT now you can see it already here if we look at these upper harmonics these what they bins as they are as they are called are the representing the energy content of the signal at these higher frequencies and now this is the first big and almost unsolvable challenge you have to determine the energy content of these upper harmonics and you have to look for these possible changes in these energy levels to find out whether the speaker is behaving properly or not even if you succeed in doing that it's a very cumbersome very time consuming procedure to fine tune these limits that you have to apply on these very small bins to define a past failed criterion for your speaker and keep in mind there are a certain class of audible failures for instance if you have a loose particle in the air gap that is definitely not detectable by this method because that it would not these defects would never create any amount of noticeable energy up here in this upper harmonics so for these type of defects which are very clearly audible if you listen to such a speaker you need a different method of detecting the rubber bus. Now, NTI Audio actually was the first company to introduce a real, reliable, good working solution to this challenge. And the core of that principle is that it works in the time domain. It's a time domain analysis in contrast to the frequency domain analysis of the distortion measurement so we create a glide sweep signal we transfer it through the speaker we pick it up with the microphone and now let's assume here we have a couple of disturbances in this signal 
Now, if we enlarge this picture a little bit, what we do is we amplify any disturbance, whatever shape it has, we amplify it and get a picture like that. So the smooth part, the sine wave itself, will be kind of an almost flat line down here, but anything that is awkward will stand out, clearly stand out. And now by applying a very simple threshold here, you can determine whether this disturbing part is audible or not, whether it is used, it can be used to reject faulty speakers or not. And we're doing that six times, so we actually analyze, we execute this analyze in six different bands. And the reason for that is by that means we achieve a perfect correlation to the human ear. Furthermore, the pure sound approach is very fast. We need typically 0 0.5 to 2 seconds, typically 1 second as an average value. Only very few large loudspeakers may need a little bit longer cycle time. But let's assume in 1 second you can typically achieve a full measurement of all the speaker parameters, including rub and bus. And last but not least, it's a very smart method because it is able to cope with the challenge of ambient noise. The more sensitive your measurement is, of course, the more prone it is to external events. Now, how do, do we achieve that? Let's assume we have here a loudspeaker measurement. And here we have, apparently, you see these black dots are indicating that these tolerance limits have been exceeded. So here we have a rub and bus effect. Possibly. We do not know it. Is it rub and bus or is it ambient noise? So what we do is we repeat the cycle and compare the two results. And now if the second cycle is clean, this effect here does not show up, then we know that this has been ambient noise. It has been external stochastic effect. It is not a systematic error of the speaker itself. This part up here, by the way, that is the what we call the fingerprint, the acoustical fingerprint of the loudspeaker. That is the intrinsic behavior. Now, by this means, we can determine that this loudspeaker is actually a good one, although the first cycle was compromised by this external noise event. How do we get to these past fade limits that have been mentioned already? The first step would always be that we define the width of the tolerance band. This may be given by the specifications, or as a rule of thumb, you could start with plus minus 3 dB. Then you would typically record the reference samples, so loudspeakers where you know they are working fine, they are good can be only one loudspeaker if you want to work with a so-called golden sample, or it can be a couple of loudspeakers as it has been uh, plotted here in the schematic view. Now next we apply this offset that we had defined before to this curve, to this number of curves that we have recorded, and that gives us actually the past failed limits. These red curves are the final red past failed limits. Well, I'm at the point of my practical presentation. I have here on my desk an FX100 with a microphone connected and a loudspeaker. I'm using the RT speaker software to control the whole system and I will show you how this looks like. So this is here the startup screen of RT speaker software. This package includes a lot of possibilities, a lot of options and settings you can adjust to customize your setup according to your demands. I will step only through the major um, procedure that is required to set up a test. So the first step would be to create a new project. Project is the term for the combination of all these test parameters of the measurement functions uh, that we want to apply on our loudspeaker. So I give this project a name. Now I could copy settings from a previous series defined project from a similar speaker, but I'm going to go for the default project settings. So you see the project has been already created and now it will open the so-called test composition panel. This is the core panel where we are adjusting all our major settings. So here we select the FXSIP module that is plugged into our FX100. 
I have here on my desk a headphone loudspeaker, a very high-end product that is very sensitive to any audible imperfection. It has an impedance of 32 ohm and it's located in a distance of 5 centimeters to the microphone. Of course, I will select the glide sweep as stated before. The system also supports the step sweep, but we prefer the glide sweep. Let's execute these tests here, Tele small and distortion. And you can see here, this is the definition of the test signal voltage. Let's go for half a volt. Now I could execute a separate suite with a higher voltage for my rub and bus test. Some speakers require this splitting of a nominal level sweep for the standard measurements and a second sweep at higher level for rub and bus test. But here in my case, I'm going to combine these two tests or these two test classes. So there's just one sweep for all these measurements. Next, I would open here the frequency and impedance panel. I want to define my bandwidth. Let's say we start at 50 hertz going up to 20 kilohertz. I have to adjust the tolerance width. Let's leave it with the 3 dB reference or uh, default value. For the impedance response, I want to increase my width to, let's say, 6 dB. Just to show that to you, we can say add. Now, these two tolerance limits definitions that I just showed you are relative. So you see it here, the tolerance calculation method is relative to the minimum maximum data of the recorded reference curve. Here, the resonance frequency, I have to reduce the capture range a little bit. Now, in opposition to this relative tolerance curve, when I go to the rub and bus test, I want to, sorry, to the distortion test, I want to define an absolute, absolute tolerance mask. Just to show that to you, how does it work? For instance, I define that here the tolerance would be 15% at 20 hertz. Then I would go for 50 hertz, again 15%, add this value. Then I would define the tolerance limit at 300 hertz. And now I'm going down to 4%. And here you see already, we have the 15% at these low frequencies. And from starting from 300 hertz, we have just 4. And let's here also apply the 4% to the 20 kilohertz. You will see this pattern, this absolute tolerance pattern, just in a minute in the production mode. Now that was our basic settings. We save and quit these settings and the system already informs us. We now have to execute the calibration. We have to take the reference data of our golden sample and then the system will calculate the tolerances before we can enter the production mode. You see here all buttons are grayed out down here so we have to execute that calibration and this is a very comfortable procedure because the FX SIP module is built in into the flexes, uh, the system can automatically switch the uh, inputs and outputs according to the demands. So it's just the press of a button and the system will calibrate itself. You have heard it maybe a little bit. A few sweeps have been executed. The whole thing took a couple of seconds. We are done now. The calibration is completed. I can save the results and I can take my reference measurements. Now I have one golden sample here on my desk that I'm going to use as reference. I'm going to measure it. You see here the red curve is the frequency response, the blue curve the distortion response. Uh, this green curve, the impedance response, looks a little bit awkward. The reason is that I do not have a very good test check here on my day table. I had to focus on uh, simple handling for my presentation. But this here, the green curve, is the impedance response. And down here, we see the rub and bus test result. Now let's redo the test. And maybe you have noticed here, this picture down here is a little bit different. 
apparently my first cycle was compromised by an external noise so i definitely do not want that this external noise goes into my reference data so i delete that cycle i can redo it once again okay very stable so here we have good database let's quit and save these reference data now the system will calculate the tolerance limits and we can enter the production mode first i'm going to retest my golden sample once again you see everything is fine everything is passed now let me switch over to another loudspeaker that i have here and let's listen to that and see how it behaves now apparently here we have a defective speaker it's quite obvious we have a very high steepness result so a clear audible rub and buzz and we also see that here in the distortion response so this um, loudspeaker has apparently a major problem that is even uh, detectable by means of distortion analysis but i have prepared another speaker that i'm going to test right now and now this is the effect that i mentioned before this speaker has as well an audible imperfection maybe you have heard in the background the sweep was ex executed twice like with the sample before the reason was whenever we have a fail here the system automatically repeats the test to find out whether it is a systematic error in this case yes and that means it is a defect of the loudspeaker now as it is a headphone loudspeaker you would clearly hear this defect but if you look up here in the distortion response you don't notice anything so this is a typical example of a loudspeaker that could not be detected by conventional measurements but you have to apply a advanced a powerful rub and bus detection method like pure sound basically that was my practical presentation so let me get back to our slideshow and summarize what i have shown to you um, you have seen in the setup picture that the system is extremely compact and it's a pretty, extremely powerful system i think it is unique right now on the market the software provides a very straightforward easy to understand quick to implement guideline to set up a test a loudspeaker test from scratch to production mode the Robin bus detection method from NTI Audio Pure Sound actually has become the de facto industry standard since its launch 10 years ago. And the definition of the past failed limits, as I shown to you, is typically based on known good reference samples. In some cases, there are, is actually, uh, or there may be, a predefined tolerance limit that you have to apply, but this requires also a very precise definition of the test environment of the test check and so on and so forth normally you are first selecting good working samples and use them as a reference database some further application hints and tips you can connect a lot of different auxiliary um, devices to this to the to the system for instance to read the serial number of your loudspeaker with a barcode scanner or to monitor the temperature humidity this might be um, an information you need to define whether the system needs to be calibrated or not for instance in a production hall that is very cold in the morning and getting hot at midday you should recalibrate the system from time to time to compensate these temperature shifts we have a digital I.O. interface built into the Flexus and by that, for instance, you could connect a stack light for the visual feedback or a foot switch for triggering the tests manually. can connect that through this interface to the system. Please take a look at our website with the um, published webinar recordings because we have some in-depth presentation had in the past. One is coping with the definition of these past fate limits it will 
introduce you to further options, further details and possibilities that you have by getting to meaningful past fail limits. And we have another webinar that you can watch where we are this, uh, explaining how to connect the system to such external devices as you have seen here on the right hand side. Furthermore, please remember the FX speaker software offers a lot of additional features and possibilities to customize your test exactly as you need it. Be it, for instance, integrating it in an automated environment, looking at statistical data, trend analysis, or customizing the data logging and reporting. If you want more details on that, please do not hesitate and contact us. We are offering online demos of the system in interaction with you so that you can ask the specific questions you have and we can show you in detail how it works. Well, I'm at the end of my presentation. You see down here the link where you will find the recorded webinars. I would like to say goodbye at this point. Thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you soon at one of our future webinars. Thank you and have a good day.